six. The Bears are on the road to face the Browns, two teams that have played each other just 16 times since 1950. Chicago's looking for their fourth straight win against Cleveland, and it's coming your way next. We are in the so-called rock and roll capital of the world, Cleveland, Ohio, at First Energy Stadium on the shores of Lake Erie. The folks here in Cleveland, even though all the down years, have never stopped supporting their hometown guys, and we got evidence of that a moment ago as the Browns made their entrance. They are ready to do battle with the Chicago Bears. Again, everyone with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. It's been a great start to the season, back-to-back -back wins to begin the campaign. Yeah, you don't want to get too excited. There's still a lot of season to go, but they've come out playing good fundamental football, and that might carry them a long way. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Bears, they come in at an early crossroads here, facing a tough opponent on the road where a loss would make them 0-3. And when you start that way, doubts really start to creep into a locker room, and guys start to battle each other instead of worrying about winning games. It's the first weekend of autumn, and the NFL is in full swing as off we go on EA Sports. Fielded just outside the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. The Bears offense ready to go to work here for the first time, leading him out the 11th overall pick of the 2021 draft. Justin Fields out of Ohio State. And frankly, this is the type of game that a great quarterback relishes because 0-2, on the road, everything's against him and his team. No one can expect them to win. Sometimes you band together real tight in that situation, and if he plays really well, they've got a chance to get that done. is not a sign of what's in store as he has to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. This defense for the Browns, very strong last week as they helped their squad improve to 2-0 on the young season. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw on tape because they stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire game, ended up getting four sacks total, and made it difficult for them to step up and find receivers downfield. Also made it hard for him to escape the pocket and run. Meanwhile, field throw there, complete to Mooney. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. The Justin Fields at quarterback gets the completion there. CD, what do you think the key is to stopping this talented former Buckeye? Pressure, pressure, pressure. Rookie quarterbacks have to survive the initiation of the pressure of the NFL. Now, his athleticism can scare you a little bit because if he evades it, he can go a long way. But in the beginning, you want his eyes to go to the rush, not downfield. So bring those extra guys and see if he can handle it. From the gun on third down, Fields. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Greedy Williams picks it off. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. And for the first time, here comes the Cleveland Browns offense. Quarterbacked by Baker Mayfield, fourth-year man from Oklahoma. And it felt like in watching the game tape, he got everyone involved last week. He was a manager. He really was. That's a great way to put it because they ran the ball some, they threw it accurately. One touchdown pass, so he didn't, you know, break the bank doing that, but he didn't throw any interceptions. That's the bottom line. That's why a defense loves a quarterback like that. Doesn't put them in bad situations. An opening for Chubb on first down as he dashes forward for about seven. A check on the numbers for Chubb from a week ago. 
North of 100 yards, the two scores. And, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to the O-line. We talked a lot about him, but offensive line was good, too. They're obviously in sync with each other, whether it's zone blocking, power running game, no matter what. He understands how to read them and find the creases that they provide. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Hand off comes to Chubb. And he's brought down. He was solid last week, over 100 yards in their victory on the ground. They want to get that going again. Absolutely. What they also understand is that from week to week, it's not necessarily the same, but they want it to be, right? What they saw last week on the ground, they want to see in this game as well. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. Hunt will score. Touchdown, Cleveland. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? I know it sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite. But the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here comes Justin Fields and the rest of the Bears' offense. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. Now they worked this well upfield across the 45. It's almost not fair when you talk about Allen Robinson to talk about how dependable he is, but that's a great word for him. Last year, first time he's gone over 100 receptions in his career, and he makes a nice catch there for a first down. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Now a give running left with Montgomery. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Browns territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Now look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. He should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down.
First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Let's go, boys. Let's go. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. <laughs> So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They run Montgomery. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. Pretty effective run there. Now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality and pound the rock. Second and two. Field's going to hold on to it. And a short pick up there down to about the nine. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. I haven't met a defense coordinator yet that thinks second and two is a fun situation to try and defend. Playbook is wide open for an offense partner. Nice job. Hold him to one after that eight-yard pick up on first down. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play. And that's going to lead him to fourth down. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. Running for it, Montgomery. And this will depend on the mark. I'm not sure he pushed the line forward. And indeed, he did not. They stop him. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And this Browns defense stands tall. Well, I guess they wanted to get that touchdown right back on their first drive, but failed to do so. And what they have to be careful of is pushing so hard to stay right there, to stay even with their opponent, that they gas themselves out. You know, it's almost like horse racing. Sometimes you don't want to take your horse right to the front and let him do all the work, and then someone catch him at the end and pass him up. You want to make sure you moderate what you're doing along the way and then go for the big finish. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a second down and two coming up. A give. This is Chubb. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. They run, Chubb. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. 45 yards on the ground for him so far. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job, and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big time running play and create extra space, You've got to hit the jackpot there. Mayfield finding Beckham, and he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. And unfortunately, in 2020, Odell Beckham tore his ACL in Week 7. The Browns still made the playoffs, but boy, if they had him around, they're thinking about a much deeper run. A good grab there. Matt Nagy wants the officials to take another look at that one. He'll throw out the challenge flag. 
Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Mayfield now from the 50. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 20 yards on both of those plays back to back there. They are moving now. It's another first down. And in his second year in Cleveland after four in Atlanta, Austin Hooper always does all he can to build some rapport with his quarterback. He did it with Baker Mayfield last year. Expects it to continue to rise here in 2021. down they'll run with Chubb and inside the 20 before he's brought down for a lot of guys playing this game there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle he's able to lower his center of gravity and turn his legs for a really nice pickup So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. On the ground, it's Chubb. Stays on his feet. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Mayfield. Touchdown, Browns! Odell Beckham, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Now that touchdown won't allow you to totally relax, but you can breathe a little easier now. Just increased their lead. for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. the score it's Parkey on to kick it away and this will not be returnable it's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback the Chicago offense set to get started and last time out went for it on fourth down turned it over gave him great field position turned it to six points so they've got to recover here Charles it's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events right the decision to go for it on fourth down caused all of that it caused every bit of it but it showed confidence hey I've got confidence in you guys go pick it up for it didn't happen also showed confidence in the defense mm -hmm. they didn't pick up their end of the bargain <laughs> so now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence they sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. A good gain on first. Has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. And off comes to Montgomery. 
And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Fields. And his throw is going to be incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Throwing again on second and ten. Fields. And it's a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. The scoreboard tells a story for him a little bit bleak, and while it's not quite desperation time yet, it's definitely getting close, but the defense reads the scoreboard as well. They're going to back up and make them really earn it. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. The one with the dime look that time on defense just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. Let's go, Chris. Let's go. The offense trots back out there. Let's turn our focus now to Nick Chubb. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. You're down two touchdowns. You just know defensively, you absolutely have to come up with a big play. That nearly was one right there. Looked over at the sideline immediately after the drop and just saw the dejection. They felt it. They thought he had it. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with it. Mayfield from the gun on third down. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. So on fourth down, here's the Scottish hammer, Jamie Gillen to punt for the Browns. Back deep, Golden Tate. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. The Bears offense out there set and ready to go. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. And still second quarter. You get points on the board here. Make you feel it okay. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. To throw his fields. And he's going to drop this off to Williams, complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. It's complete to Robinson. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but 
Isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Here's Chris Jones now as he'll kick it away for the second time. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. Now Nick Chubb and the Browns get set for their next possession. He's been good, his guys are winning. So far the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. Yeah, this is a confident group. At the very least, they're thinking field goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half when you have a chance to put some more points on the board. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. A first down throw for Mayfield. Over the middle complete. That's Higgins. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Mayfield on first down. Over to Hooper on the sideline. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. To throw again on second down. Mayfield. And this all incomplete. He tried to check it down to his running back and nearly had the ball picked. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And Parkey's kick is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Time to give you folks at home a look around the NFL on this first official weekend of fall. So let's get to it. We'll start up in the Steel City, Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. And they are nearing halftime with the Steelers out in front. A touchdown pass there for Ben Roethlisberger. Next, we'll head over to check on the Giants at home at MetLife Stadium. And they've got the lead in that one over the visiting Atlanta Falcons. The Giants seem to be on their way to what would be a good victory. Lastly, let's motor up to the Motor City. See what's happening with the Lions at home at Ford Field. And at this point, they trail the visiting Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson has thrown a touchdown pass. Moving on, let's take a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Bears. And they will need to get this passing game in gear because they did not do much of anything in that first half. And it's why the scoreline is what it is. Meanwhile, for the Browns, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. Final adjustments being made in the locker room. We're just about set for the second half from Cleveland. And to bring it your way, we go back up 
to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. Peoples Jones returning, and he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So here are the Browns to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and 10. The third quarter starts with a run by Chubb, pushing his way through. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 83 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. He's turning in a pretty impressive performance running the football, and a big reason why they have this nice lead. And in days gone by, we would clip this out and put it up on the refrigerator. When we clip out the box score, nowadays, not too many newspapers out there. Maybe you screenshot it online. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. A run for Nick Chubb. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun, Mayfield. It's caught by Hooper. And he's going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 38. Now Chubb. Flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Good job there keeping him to a short gain. Of course, he's coming off a really terrific performance, reigning NFC Defensive Player of the Week. And I know people get caught up in, well, if you're the reigning Defensive Player of the Week, you must have made a bunch of spectacular plays. Like you mixed in a few of those, but most of the plays are just like we saw there. Keep them to short gains, make the fundamental tackle. They got the win last week despite not having any interceptions. Tried to come up with one there, could not. But there's a stat category called PBU, pass breakup. That's important, too, and they got one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because at least you're there knocking the ball away. Offense isn't possessing it, making plays downfield. And you just continue to harass the receivers, harass the quarterback, and maybe the big play does occur down the road. That's another beautiful throw right there. Gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hunt. And the Browns are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. And, oh, this is Beckham remaining down on the ground. And apparently in some pain. We'll check on his status when we get back. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. 
Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Again, it's Hunt. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. A chance to really put this game out of reach. Here's third and goal. Mayfield down toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. The kick by Parkey is good, and the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They're in a bit of a bind, a pretty big bind, down 20 nothing as they start here on first and 10. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. From the 30 on second down, Fields. The connection made. It's Graham. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. On first down, Fields. Caught right side, Tate. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Chalk that up as their first sack in this game, and they tallied four a week ago. And probably not as much exultation in that sack as what took us so long. Because when you get four the previous week, you're counting on continuing that momentum. They didn't get that done in the first half of the game. Let's see now if they start to bring even more exotic pressure towards the quarterback. So now following the sack, Fields of the Bears looking at third down and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's got his man. This is Tate. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it will still lead to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Chris Jones now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. Oh, 
And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. You're three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. Chubb. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Running with Hunt here out of the shotgun. He stiff arms him. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. <laughs> On first down, they go right back to Hunt. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off the game. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. 115 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Mayfield gives this one to Hunt. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter. Looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. Going deep here for Landry. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Now Mayfield. And oh, that's going to wind up incomplete. Nearly their first pick of the game, but it does bring up fourth down. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. And Parkey's kick is good. And that will up the score now. It's 23-zip. 
So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Parkey now following the main field goal to kick this one off. Taken at about the one. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. And they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the gun, here's Fields. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. Out of the gun, Fields. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Robinson. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. They're giving those short little routes, tackled him in bounds too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes, but now you gotta have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. And left side here, it's Graham. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A big play that time on the catch and run. You think about this strong safety position. You know, they're the more bulkier guys in the free safety, but that time great athleticism to hustle in and break up that play. Yeah, this defense as a whole has really been flying to the football all game long. They have not allowed too much of anything. And here's another example. A great play there to get in and disrupt it before it could get going. And his maximum speed there, according to the next-gen stats, 21.9 miles per hour. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Back to throw, Fields. Being chased out left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Throwing again on second down. Fields. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are go. really for next week, Here trying we to get some momentum going. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Fields on first down. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Escaping the pressure right. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. A shotgun snap, Fields. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. 
on fourth down, Fields. And this is caught, touchdown. Wait, hold a second here, flag down. Let's see if this will stand. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They'll try and wind down some clock with Chubb. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Well, the lead late in the fourth, but Mayfield's going to throw it. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. Well, clear running situation. Trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play. Set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Mayfield to throw it. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. now. Here's Mayfield. He completes it to Beckham. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. So instead of running, Mayfield's going to throw it here. Going right back to Beckham here, complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. It's Mayfield. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And this one almost intercepted. Had a chance to come down with it in the end zone, but could not hang on. Similar to a shooter in basketball just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now we had a guy who made the catch. They tried to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Oh, he left that one in a bad spot, but fortunately it's just an incompletion and not picked to bring up fourth down.
And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will make the lead now 26. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. But they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. So for the Browns, it's an ideal start as they move to 3-0 now on the young season. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Minnesota Vikings. Meanwhile, for Chicago, the early struggles continue as they'll sink to 0-3. And they'll get a home date next week against the Detroit Lions.